every two sexually active adult, one of them will be exposed to human papilloma virus, HPV. Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Ask Me Doctor. I am Hazel from motherhood.com.my. Our topic for today is cervical cancer and ovarian cancer. Cervical cancer and ovarian cancer are among the top 10 most common cancer in women. It is very important to detect these cancers early to improve the chances of recovery. Hello Dr. Tan. Hi, I'm Dr. Tan Cheng. I'm the obstetrician and gynecologist in Dongxing Hospital. Hi doctor, is ovarian cancer only related to married women and does not affect singles? Well, this statement is not true. There are different types of ovarian cancer and it can affect both young and elderly women. It can affect both virgin and also those who have been sexually active. So 5-10% to of all cancers are inherited. Further, 10-50% to of cancers, there can be multifactorial interactions. We know that BRCA gene is associated with breast, ovarian, fallopian tube cancers. Number 9. Do those with a family history of cancer have an increased risk of getting ovarian cancer and cervical cancer? Well, a woman is defined as being at high risk of ovarian cancer if she has a first degree relative, meaning the mother, father, sister, brother, daughter or sons that is affected by cancer within the family. Cancer can be ovarian cancer, breast cancer, especially if they are diagnosed under the age of 50 years, colon cancers, uh, stomach, endometrial, urinary tract or small bowel cancer, especially if it happens in two generations. So cervical cancer and ovarian cancer may run in the families. Number 8. Dr. Tan, do I have any chance of getting pregnant if I was previously diagnosed with ovarian cysts? Yes, a lady has two ovaries. So if you had an operation before for the ovarian cyst, it can either be a cystectomy, which means a removal of the cyst, or oophorectomy, which means the removal of the entire ovary. Cystectomy itself means that the ovary of the affected site is still there and therefore it still has its function. Even if it's oophorectomy, you still have the ovary from the other side and you will still be able to produce oocytes, eight, and therefore you will still be able to get pregnant. How can I check for ovarian cancer? Is there a screening test for ovarian cancer? Our screening test is used to detect a disease in people without any symptoms. There has been a lot of research in order to develop a screening test for ovarian cancer. However, until now, there is not a reliable single screening test as yet. We can use ultrasounds such as transabdominal or transvaginal ultrasound to assess the ovary. And this can allow us to identify any growth, any cysts, any mass over the ovaries. Or if the ultrasound image is suspicious of a cancer, further investigations can be carried out. There are blood tests available for us to be, to be used in combinations with the ultrasound in order to assess the risk of cancer. So tumor markers such as CA125 is commonly used when ovary cancer is suspected. Number 6. Human papilloma virus often causes cancer. Doctor, what are HPV-associated cancers that we should know about? The current data actually suggests that 5% of the newly diagnosed cancer cases worldwide is caused by human papilloma virus, HPV. Now this HPV causes about 99% of cervical cancer, 85 to 91% of anal cancer, 70 to 78% of vaginal cancer, and roughly about 30% of bowel cancer. So then, how common is human papilloma virus? Human papilloma virus, HPV, is a sexually transmitted infection majority of the population will be exposed to it. Roughly every two sexually active adults, one of them will be exposed to human papilloma virus, HPV. Are there any symptoms for HPV infection? During the initial phase, majority will not have any symptoms. In fact, healthy body immune system may actually clear the infections naturally. So in the cases of persistent infections, you may have genital warts, if you are affected by a low-risk human papilloma virus, while cancer may be developed years later by high-risk human papilloma virus infections. Now then, that leads to my next question. How can I detect HPV infection? The current cervical screening using the liquid cytology can provide a human papilloma virus HPV genotyping. It can determine the type of HPV you have before there's any changes to the cervical cells itself. What about cervical cancer? Are there any symptoms for cervical cancer? Cervical cancer at its early stage normally do not have any symptoms. Now when the disease is more advanced, commonly reported symptoms may include uh, abnormal vaginal bleeding such as postquartal bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding or postmenopausal bleeding. You may have abnormal vaginal discharge, some pain over the pelvic or painful sexual intercourse. 
How can I prevent cervical cancer? Currently, uh, there are two ways to prevent cervical cancer. Prior to the availability of vaccinations, the main method of prevention is by cervical cancer screening. Now, this can detect precancerous changes and allow early treatment to be initiated. Human papilloma virus HPV vaccinations, on the other hand, can prevent human papilloma virus infections itself. Now, the latest vaccine is able to provide protection for nine types of HPV, namely HPV 6, 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. Just to add on, HPV vaccination is free to all Malaysians or permanent residents, female who are aged between 23 and 26, single, not yet married, or not pregnant yet. It's important to know that vaccinations at older age is less effective in lowering cancer risk. Now, about the second way to prevent cervical cancer, when should I go for screening? Well, cervical screening should be initiated among those who are 25 years old and above when you are sexually active. If you are between the age of 25 to 49 and it's advised to be done at least once every 3 yearly. If you are between the age of 50 and 65 and it should be done at least once every 5 yearly. After the age of 65, there is no need for further cervical screening providing all your previous screening as normal. Thank you Get Dog and Dr. Time for answering our questions today. Ask Me Doctor is a video series about women's health brought to you by Get Dog and motherhood.com.my. Sign up for Get Dog Plus today so that you can make your appointment before your next consultation with Dr. Time. If you're pregnant or know someone who is pregnant, get your free checklist at Motherhood Antenatal Class online. Stay tuned for our next weekly Q&A. Remember to submit your question before Thursday and stand a chance to win free 2 years of subscription of Get Dog Plus and time ringgate motherhood.com.my voucher. Thank you for watching our video. I am Hazel and I'll see you next episode.